dividing PO into two parts. So what next? What are we going to do next? The next step is that I'll divide PQ and PR into 10 equal parts. PQ and PR are the slant, uh, the slant uh, sides of the triangle that I'm doing. PQ is on the left hand side and PR on the right hand side. Now remember one thing. If you are dividing one side from P to R as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, the other side would be the opposite of that. Say if I this is the uh, this is the side of these are the two slant sides. Then what I'll do is on one side I'll do is one two three four five six seven, and on the right next side I'll have one two three four five six seven. I'll show it again. See if this is my uh, triangle, then I have the points. I'll mark the points in what manner? One two three four five six seven. 8, 9, 10. And on this side, what will I have is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, 1 going downwards, 1 coming upwards. So, here we'll have an ascending order. So, here we'll, we will have an descending order. As you will see in the figure, the points are being divided from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and finally the point p will be 10 now as you can see i've marked from q to p as 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and the final point is p that is the 10th part now here i'm going in the other order here i can say from p to q it is descending order and here from p to r it is ascending order so this is very crucial because if i construct uh, the same point say on the right hand side again i'll give 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 instead of uh, this manner then what will happen i'll have horizontal lines but what i need is i need slant lines so if i don't have slant lines i won't have uh, tangents i'll have intersection intersecting lines to the parabola but i know the path will be something of this sort so i need lines which are in a uh, crisscross manner this way or this way so next thing what i'm going to do is i'm going to join 1 to 1 dash 2 to 2 dash 3 to 3 dash and up till 9 to 9 dash all the points i'll join one by one which will go something like this you can see as it you can see 1 to 1 dash 2 to 2 dash 3 to 3 dash 4 to 4 dash 5 to 5 dash 6 to 6 dash 7 to 7 dash 8 to 8 dash and finally 9 to 9 dash now if you are if you observe this figure very carefully there, there is a line that is 5 5 dash that is totally horizontal or say it is parallel to QR now that point suggests this point 5 5 dash the intersecting with this axis this point suggests that this will be uh, the point through which the parabola is going to pass and we can say that this is the, also the maximum height that has been attained by an object if it is following this parabolic motion in this particular figure let's now what we are going to do is we are going to draw a smooth curve which will be passing through each and every sorry it will be touching each and every line that has been drawn say it is going to touch 1 1 dash it is going to touch 2 2 dash 3 3 dash 4 4 dash 5 5 dash 6 6 dash 7 dash 8 dash 8 8 dash 9 all the lines has to be touched so if i pass a curve smooth curve through all these lines touching all these lines then I'll have my parabola that is required in this particular uh, say method that is through the tangent method. Let's see. Slowly I'll pass this line. So uh, if you can see, if you see closely, it is touching all the lines. My figure might not be accurate because it has been drawn freely by using a mouse instead of uh, using a freehand uh, pencil on the sketchbook, which is rather more accurate than this particular thing that is there. So I have draw I have tried maximum to make it as accurate as possible. So it starts from Q and it goes on and goes on. It touches one one dash two two dash three three dash four four dash. Then it comes here. It touches five five dash. That is the maximum point. So now what is happening? The lines are coming downwards. So I'll have six six dash touch here seven seven dash eight eight dash nine nine dash and finally I have it landed on point R. So this curve that is there will be my uh, required parabola by tangent method moving on the next method that we are going to discuss today is directrix focus method now this same method was implied to draw an ellipse also 
that was discussed in the on previous sunday that is the last session that we did now the points a uh, few of the steps will be similar there will be minute changes that will be there so uh, please look carefully and do observe the changes that are there first i'm again going to discuss what is a directrix so this is a parabola that has been drawn now uh, for a uh, this parabola eccentricity e is equal to 1 now what is directrix here we I, as i told you before also that if i am taking points different points on the parabola say i have taken this point now the distance between the focus this is the focus this is the point taken and this is the directrix that i have plotted now i have to check whether this directrix is actual directrix to this curve or no so how will i check that S the directrix this distance will be say x and this distance say y if x is coming equal to y then it will be what it will be a directrix to a parabola now why is that because here we are doing x by y sorry y by x that is this distance from the focus is my cursor yeah this distance from the focus is y and this distance from the directrix is x so y by x is, is equal to 1 so that will that is only possible when x is, is equal to y so now for this method uh, for discussing this method and constructing a parabola using this method what we will do is we will assume that the focus is 70 mm from directrix and the eccentricity is, is equal to 1 now if you remember in focus I took uh, 70 mm because it was 3 by 4 so if I am doing 3 by 4 then 3 plus 4 is 7 so I will mark my uh, point at 4 but here what I am going to do is that my focus is 70 mm apart and the distance between the directrix and focus if i make it half i'll have the point from where the vertex the uh, through which the parabola is going to pass so it goes something like this let's start with the first step first i'm going to draw the directrix and then the axis cc dash and directrix a b a b and c c dash this is uh, a b is my directrix and c c dash is my axis of the parabola next step from c uh, sorry from mark f from c, on c c dash c c dash is the axis of the parabola so uh, my focus will also lie on c c dash and the distance between c and the focus f is 70 mm so i'm going to take uh, 70 mm radius on my uh, protector and put it the center i'll put it on c and cut an arc on f that will give me what that will give me my focus of my parabola that i am going to construct that is 70 mm as you can see cf is, uh, CF is 70 mm apart so i am going to cut an arc here and i have my focus the next is i am going to mark midpoint of cf as we now as i said uh, because this is a parabola i have 70 mm dimension so if i divide it in half i will have my point v from which my parabola is going to pass now if in ellipse if you remember ellipse uh, eccentricities ratio is less than one so what i did is that if I, I had seven parts so i divided it into seven points then what i did is the eccentricity ratio was three by four so it is less than one so the distance from the uh, directrix is four and distance from the focus is three so i marked v three points away from focus and four points away from uh, directrix rather than dividing it into half here for parabola eccentricity is, is equal to 1 that is e is equal to 1 that its distance from the focus and distance from the directrix is equal so the point through on the axis on which my directrix is going to pass that is my vertex will be equal distance from focus as well as from the directrix so that's why let's uh, take a look at the figure i've divided now totally cf is 70 mm so i have cv that is 35 mm so this point P is through which my uh, parabola is going to pass on the axis. Now let us point, uh, plot a few points above and below the axis through which the parabola is going to pass. Now for that, first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark seven points as I did as I'm doing the I, as I did in ellipse also. I'm going to mark seven points uh, on the axis C, C dash starting from V at equal distances. Say V one then 2 then 3 4 5 6 and 7 these are seven points on the axis starting from v which are equal distances from each other 
now what is the next thing that i'm going to do is next thing that i'm doing going to do is i'm going to draw perpendiculars through one two three four five six and seven now these perpendiculars uh, these perpendiculars are perpendicular to what they are perpendicular to the axis c c dash and they are parallel to the directrix so first i'll write through one two three four five six and seven so i have these lines so I, I can say that these are different steps through which the parabola is going to pass now i want to plot points on these lines from where the parabola is going to pass so what am i going to do for that for that the first thing that i'll do is i'll take the radius equal to c to 1 on the axis then i'll put my the radius on uh, the protector i'll take as c to 1 i'll measure it on the uh, chart and then i'll take it as c to 1 then what I'll do is I put my center at F and cut an arc on the line that is passing through 1. Let's see in the figure. The distance is from C to 1. I've taken it on the radius. I've taken it on the protector. Then I'll put this is my focus. So I'll put my pointed end at F and cut an arc above and below at like this P and P dash. I again mentioned that I have taken points instead of arcs so that my work becomes a little bit easier and you are able to see these points clearly that where it is being cut if I draw an arc which is a small uh, small line or a thin line then it won't be visible on the television so that's why I have taken points instead of arcs but in original drawing that you're going to do is you're going to take arcs instead of these points that I've taken now the next step is I'm going to take C to 2 that is C to again put my pointed end at f and cut an arc on this line which is passing through 2 like this which is p1 and p1 dash the next thing i'll do is uh, for 3 then again i'll do it for 4 then again i'll take the distance as equal to c to 5 and then i'll put my uh, pointed end at, uh, here and i'll cut an arc somewhere here and uh, here on the line which is passing through 5 but yes like this now the next point is 6 and 7 for that I'll repeat the same procedure I have not marked these arcs here because then it would have gone above this and below this for I didn't have any space so that's why I couldn't mark uh, arcs for 6 and 7 but the same procedure has to be uh, repeated by you for this line 6 and this line 7 that is if you will take the distance as C to 6 put the pointed end at F and cut an arc which will come somewhere here and somewhere here that will be p next year uh, whatever it is p and p dash and then again c to 7 you will take the radius from c to 7 and then put your pointed end at f and cut an arc which will be somewhere here and somewhere here i hope you understood uh, this is for 5 okay so let's move on now what is the next step now i have different points i have the vertex i have the points uh through which the parabola is going to pass above the axis and below the axis so i'll repeat the same old procedure that i always do through these points i will pass a smooth curve now uh, this smooth curve will now give me the parabola that is required by me as you can see here this is the parabola that is required by me so these were the four methods uh, for construction of parabola now we move on to hyperbola now I'll, I'll make one point clear again for ellipse eccentricity was less than one for parabola eccentricity was equal to one and now for the hyperbola eccentricity is greater than one so let's see ki how a hyperbola is constructed or got obtained from a cone so this is again uh, the same thing that I showed you last time also this is a cone and this reddish plane that you can see is a plane that has been passed through the cone see, this is the plane that has been passed through this cone now the thing is that this the difference that is there between the parabola and hyperbola is that for uh, parabola this plane was parallel to this slant line but for hyperbola this angle say this this angle that it is making with the horizontal the plane is making with the horizontal is very steep or say greater you know, almost tending to 90 degrees but not 90 degrees so if i remove this part 
and remove this part then I have this parabola uh, sorry I have two curves now this whole thing is known as an hyperbola for which eccentricity is greater than 1 as you can see mentioned here again in this curve as you can see this was an ellipse this was a parabola now this is a hyperbola you can see that the distance now it is more flatter than a parabola so what happens is that its distance from the directrix is less and distance from the focus is more so what happens is if the distance from the focus is more than the distance from the directrix then obviously e is great is going to be greater than 1 which is uh, which we have already which we already know so this proves the point that for para uh, sorry hyperbola e is greater than 1 now there are for hyperbola there are three different methods for construction rectangular method oblique method directrix and focus method we have already discussed these three methods for parabola these methods are going to be very similar here also now for rectangle what is a rectangular parabola again there will be a coordinate axis for which we are going to take 90 degrees coordinate axis that is just like an xy plane for oblique what what the difference will be that instead of these axes being perpendicular these axes will be at an uh, angle say 75 80 degrees or 90 degrees but greater than 45 that uh, has to be there because if it is less than 45 or say 45 then it will get converted uh, sorry if it is less than 45 then it will get converted into an ellipse that is there so let's move on to our first method that is rectangular hyperbola now what is given in the question mostly we have a point say for example I've taken here is 3 3 that is 3 on the X and 3 on the Y and then I'll have something in the XY plane uh, is a point that 3 3 that through which my hyperbola has to pass now my first step here would be drawing the axis for this I'll first plot the point I'll draw the axis, I'll plot the point and then I'll draw a parabola that is passing through that point that is required in this particular method. For that, step one would be draw the coordinate system. Here, the coordinate system, uh, the axis would be OA and OB, that is uh, OA is the uh, x-axis and OB is the y-axis and then I'll plot point 3, 3 in this axis and here OA is perpendicular to OB. If OA is not perpendicular to OB, then instead of rectangular method, it will become the oblique method. As you can see, this is point O and this is OA and this is OB. These are my two uh, axes. Now, 